So we're going to do derivatives of polynomials and exponential functions. And I guess I need to know what a polynomial is. And I'm using that kind of loosely, hence the ish right there. Um, a polynomial is something that looks like this. It says where a and b are just real numbers. Uh, a few examples of polynomials. So uh, a polynomial would be something like uh, 4x cubed. That's an ugly 4 plus 2x minus not. Um, that's, a, that's a pretty basic polynomial. Um, you have real number coefficients and real number exponents. Anything that can be written as a number times x to some power, we're going to be able to use this derivative rule with. Um, other polynomials, if I had like um, 3x to the 1 half minus the square root of 7 times x to the 5th, those are written as a number times x to a power, and then we can use the power rule. Uh, and sometimes you have to do a little bit of twisting around with the problem. Um, if I had, say, the square root of x, the way that's written, it's not x to a power, but you could pretty easily change that to x to the 1 half. And that's the form we need it to be in to do these derivative shortcuts. So uh, first, let me show you what the power rule is. Um, so the power rule, it is if your function, y is equal to some number times x to some exponent, then its derivative, dy dx, is uh, you bring down the exponent and you multiply, multiply by the coefficient, so it would be a times n, and then x, then you subtract 1 from the old exponent, a times n, x to the n minus 1. Uh, so I'm going to do a few really quick examples. So if I had y is equal to uh, 4x squared um, plus 9x cubed, the derivative of that, simply bring down the 2. 2 times 4 is 8x, and 2 minus 1 is 1. Bring down the 3. 3 times 9 is 27x, and 3 minus 1 is 2. Um, and, of course, you don't really have to put 8x to the first. I would expect you just write 8x plus 27x squared. That would be your derivative. Um, if you have just, say, 5x, if, you only, if there was no written exponent on x, then it's an understood 1. The derivative of that, y prime, uh, bring down the 1, 1 times 5 is 5, x to the, and if you subtract 1, 1 minus 1 is 0, and x to the 0 is just 1. So the derivative of 5x is just 5. And um, the derivative of a constant, like if I had y equals 7, and I wanted to do the derivative of that, um, that's the same thing as having 7x to the 0, because I have no x's. The derivative, if you bring down that 0, you'd have 0 times 7, which is 0. And it really doesn't matter what you have for x, because you're multiplying it by 0. So the derivative of a constant is 0. Um, and another way you could think of that is, if I were to just graph the line y equals 7, that would be a horizontal line through y equals 7. And remember, derivatives tell you slope. So uh, if that's my graph, the slope of a horizontal line is 0, so the derivative is 0 for a constant. So that is your basic power rule. And then what I'm going to show you now is a few cases where you have to twist the function to the n power rule form. So you keep an eye on the time. You need to keep it close to 10 minutes. Um, so um, let's say you had radicals. So uh, I don't know what number I'm on. I'll call it 4. I think that's actually right. Yeah. Okay. Um, so if I had 3 times the square root of x plus 9x cubed. Now I'll do 9x to the 4th. What the heck. Um, before you do the derivative, you need to have it written as 3x to the 1 half. Just change that radical into exponential form or as an exponent. Plus 9x to the 4th. And now I can do the derivative of this thing right there. So we're going to do the derivative of that. Um, so the derivative would be, bring down the 1 half, 3 times a half is 3 halves, x to the 1 half minus 1 is negative 1 half, and then we'll do the derivative of 9x to the 4th, 4 times 9 is 36, x to the subtract 1, that'd be 3. So if you have radicals, you want to do it like that, um, just a very quick review on how to do change things, so uh, like if I had the 4th root of x to the 7th. That's the same thing as x to the 7 fourths. And then the derivative of that, bring down the 7 fourths and multiply it by the coefficient of 1. 
um, x and 7 fourths minus 1 is 3 fourths. So there's your derivative. Um, so that's how you handle it. If you have radicals, just change it to where it's an exponent. Um, if you have something like, what number am I on? Like 17? All right. Uh, if you have something like 6x to the 5th plus 2 over x cubed, um, you cannot do power rule until you have it as a number times x to a power. You can't have like 2 over x cubed. So uh, 6x to the 5th is fine. I'll keep that as it is. That's a number times x to a power. I'm going to change 2 over x cubed to 2x to the negative 3. Now I can follow my power rule. So y prime is going to be 5 times 6 is 30 x to the 4th, bring down the negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, x and negative 3 minus 1 is negative 4. Um, so if you do have x in the denominator, you need to bring it up with a negative exponent, then you can do the power rule. Uh, <clears throat> um, other ways where you may want to simplify, if you're looking down at set part D, we're talking about STDs, which I think we've talked about STDs before. Um, if I have, I'm just going to make something up here, say if I had 2 plus x cubed, minus x to the fourth all over x cubed. Well, yeah. Hey, remember, you can split that up. I'm going to group it as uh, 2 over x cubed. And then I've got x cubed over x cubed. And I'll group that positive sign with it. So plus x cubed over x cubed. And then the last one, I'm out of dotted lines, is x to the fourth over x cubed. And I think that was a minus, minus x to the fourth over x cubed. I've kind of drawn over that. I can't tell what it was. I think that's right. Uh, and then once you split it up, now you simplify each one of those fractions so that I can do the derivative. 2 over x cubed, you change the 2x to the negative 3. Same thing I have up there in number 17. Um, x cubed over x cubed is 1, and x to the fourth over x cubed is x. And now when I do the derivative of that, y prime, 3 times negative, or negative 3 times 2 is negative 6, x to the negative 4. The derivative of 1, that's a constant. The derivative of any constant is 0, and the derivative of negative x is negative 1. So uh, you could leave it like that, but if you want to add your 0, if you know your 0 plus tables, 0 minus 1 is negative 1, and there's my derivative. Um, and last thing, when we're doing power rule, ways you're going to have to clean it up, like number 27 here. I'm just making up these numbers. Uh, if I had, say, x squared plus 1 times x minus 3, and I wanted to do that derivative. This is a product of two polynomials. We're multiplying two things, and we're actually going to learn a product rule eventually. But the product rule is kind of... It's really it's a lot more difficult than the power rule. So what I'm going to do is just expand this. x squared times x is x cubed. x squared times negative 3. 1 times x. And 1 times negative 3. I'll expand that out. And now I have a polynomial. And I can do the derivative of that polynomial. dy dx. Derivative of x cubed. Bring down the 3. x. 3 minus 1 is 2. Minus 3x squared. 2 times 3 is 6. x to the first. The derivative of x is just 1, and the derivative of a constant is 0. So if you need to multiply things out so that you can do the power rule, then I would do that. Um, jumping on to 29. And same thing goes uh, if you have like the square root of x times um, x to the fifth plus 2x. Uh, again, I don't like radicals. I'm going to change that to x to the 1 half times x to the fifth plus 2x. And then, instead of doing the product rule, because I am multiplying x to the 1 half times that stuff, I'm going to distribute the x to the 1 half. And remember, when you distribute, you add the exponents. So 1 half plus 5. 5 is 10 halves, right? Get a common denominator. So 1 half plus 10 halves is 11 halves. Plus 2x and 1 plus 1 half is 3 halves. So 2x to the 3 halves. And now I'll do the derivative of that. So y prime is, we'll bring down the 11 over 2, x, 11 over 2 minus 1 is 9 over 2, plus 2 times 3 over 2, the 2's will cancel, leaving the 3, and 3 halves minus 1 is 1 half. Um, 
So that's how we'll do that. If you can multiply it out to get a string of something that looks like a polynomial, a number times x to a power, then I would do that. Um, let's see, we're at 1038 now. Okay. Um, so that's your power rule. Really quick, I'm going to show you the ex how to do exponential functions. So uh, exponential functions. I'll abbreviate that. Uh, exponential functions are functions uh, in the form a number to the x power. Not x to a number, but a number to the x. So a few examples would be like y equals 4 to the x. y equals 9 to the x. The most common one we're going to deal with is y equals e to the x. e is a number. Those are exponential functions. And you, for the derivative, you don't follow the power rule. You don't bring down the exponent and do all that. It's completely different. So your rule for exponential functions is if y is equal to some number to the x power, then the derivative, dy dx, is you copy the function as it is, a to the x power, times the natural log of a. So it's a to the x times the natural log of a, and that is how you do the derivative of exponential functions. Um, the most common one you'll have is e to the x. So if y is equal to e to the x, this is kind of a special case. You're going to follow the same rule. Then dy dx, the derivative is, you copy the function as it was, e to the x, times the natural log of e, uh, but the natural log of e is just 1. So if you think about that, this is just e to the x times 1. So the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x. And I think we talked about that last week when we were doing graphs of derivatives. So there's the derivative of e to the x. It is just e to the x, and that's the easiest one there is. Um, so a quick example of a function where you would have to do the derivative of an exponential. So like if I have y equals x cubed plus 3x squared plus 7 to the x. Okay, now I've mixed power rule with the exponential function. y prime would be the derivative of x cubed. That's polynomial. That's an x to a power. Bring down the 3. x, 3 minus 1 is 2. Plus 3x squared. That's another polynomial. 3 times 2 is 6. x, 2 minus 1 is 1. Plus, now 7 to the x, this is an exponential function. So now I'm going to use this rule, a number to the x power. The derivative is, you copy it exactly as it is, times the natural log of whatever the base is. And that would be the derivative of that problem. Hey, that's it. Hopefully this will help you finish up the 